dollar bill, yo. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to my 7.0 Blackguard Assassin Guide. So there's been quite a few changes that have happened to the Blackguard Assassin, and overall, I'm very positive on all of the changes. I think the class is much more fun to play. You have a lot more options. You have a lot more stuff you're actually doing in combat, and I'm using disciplines, and there's so many more options that I've never considered before with these changes. Uh, I think it's I think the way they've done the toxins is super cool. A lot of creativity you can do there. Um, so I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So I know a lot of new players watch these kind of videos. So I will give you a warning that the assassin class in general is not the most new player friendly thing in the game. There's just not a lot of room for error. Is even with the blackguard. The blackguard's the tanky spec. But a lot of its tankiness relies on you executing your abilities well and using your abilities before the damage is coming. Um, and in order to do that, you need to know about the other classes, right? So, Assassin, personally, is not something I would make for my very first character. However, you can do it. You can do it, and I know some people have done it. But Crowfall is a game that you can play multiple classes very easily in. So, it's not like some big thing if you want to have alts, right? So, anyway... Uh, that's my warning. Overall, very positive on the changes, but let's get started into the video. So, let's get started with the races. So, I am a half-elf, but man, I gotta say, all of the races are extremely competitive for the Assassin, especially this patch. Um, half-elf definitely lost a little bit of an edge. I would have said the half-elf was probably the best Blackguard last patch, just by a little bit. But Half-Elf kind of lost a little bit of power because the new Blackguard kit has a lot of CC immunity. Particularly my build has a lot of CC immunity. So you're naturally just not going to get enough, you're not going to get as much value out of Wildkin's Retort, the uh, heal that hits you when you get CC'd. So uh, Half-Elf lost a little bit of power there. I also do not have room on my bar for Bandit's Armor. So that's a, you know, that's pretty big as well. But counterpoint, I also wouldn't have room for Humiliate or the uh, Nathari Burn either, for example, right? Um, not with my build in particular. So, uh, all the races are extremely competitive. Crowfall has very good race balance. Say what you want to about the class balance in the game. The race balance is phenom done phenomenally well. Almost all of the classes have this dilemma with which race should I play. So they've done a great job with that. Um, I am still half-elf. Half-elf is good. You get that extra minor slot. Uh, Bandit's Armor is still going to be healing you some, uh, just not as much as it did last patch, just because, again, you have more CC immunity going on, which we'll get to here in a minute. But, uh, yeah, really good, dude. There, there's a lot of really good choices, and honestly, if you pick the race that you think looks the coolest, that wouldn't even be a bad idea. It really wouldn't. All right, now let's get on to the good stuff, and the first big change is Deadly Infector. We are now running the Plague Domain, and Deadly Infector changes everything. Uh, this is a completely different play style. You now have a solid spender as a Blackguard. For the longest time, Blackguards really didn't have a real spender. Um, and now we do with Diffusion, if you spec it. And also, Daggerstorm is a real spender now. So, um, Diffusion takes one pip, short cooldown, one pip, and does damage based off of how many Toxin buffs you have active. And it can hit pretty hard, man. I hit like a 2k on a Confessor the other day. So... Don't sleep on the damage. It's got a short cooldown. Uh, your DPS rotation with Diffusion is going to be very active. Uh, you're gonna... It's one of the more intense DPS rotations in the game, which feels good because when you're doing it right and you're owning, it feels great. So, uh, Diffusion is, is fantastic. It feels good to have something that actually hits, you know, pretty, pretty hard sometimes, right? And also, it's a skill that takes a little bit of skill because you have to have the toxins up before you use it. You can't just use the ability and have it hit hard. You've got to set it up a little bit. So I really enjoy that. Um, that That's just really satisfying. That's really all it is. And then we have Invenom, which is going to help you set up your diffusions. Now, personally, I don't use Invenom for uh, for that, that much, to be honest. I use Invenom for all the other stuff it does, and I just view it applying all my toxins uh, as a bonus. A lot of times, I use Invenom to break CC, or I use it for the CC immunity, or... I use it for the Yaga's Gift heal. Whenever you use Venom and you have Yaga's Gift, it's going to heal you for 750 health. And it is, it's actually going to be 1,000 health next patch because right now Venom is bugged and isn't applying deadly poison. So next patch, it should be applying four toxins and healing you for 1,000. So that's going to be pretty solid. Um, but yeah, Deadly Infector changes the whole game for sure. Um, and Venom, and Venom does replace your Shadow Step. So you are going to be a little bit more committal to your fights. 
but it's better on, in my opinion. And next up we have Poison Sapper. This one is real easy. I literally only use it for Poison Paradise. I don't even have Spirit Dart on my bar. That's what I think of Spirit Dart. It is literally not on my bar. Because uh, it's not even worth it. It's not worth using because all Spirit Dart's going to do... First of all, it's not going to help you any. Like, crippling poison before you even open. Like, you have all your mobility available to you. It's just not going to do anything. All it's going to do is alert enemies to your presence so they have more time to react to your real attacks. So, but uh, Poison Paradise is very good. 8% life steal. It's dope. Black Guards actually do some significant damage now, so that 8% life steal is actually kind of nice. All right, now let's get into the minor disciplines. First up, we have Barb Steak. Uh, this is coming from the Plague Domain, and honestly, I just throw this bad boy down. It takes two pips. I don't think about it too much. Throw it down. If people stay in it, great. If they take time to run out of it, that's fine too. Um, Barb Steak does stack with your Garot Bleed. So Barb Steak does bleed damage, but it's not technically a bleed. It does not apply a bleed debuff, but it does bleed damage to anybody standing in it. So you can double dip with your bleed, your Assassin Bleed and your Barb Steak Bleed. <clears throat> and it's also an AoE, so it hits multiple targets. Uh, but it does very good single target damage too. It's a really solid ability. Uh, just throw that bad boy down. Don't think about it too much. Get that bad boy on cooldown. You know, whatever. If, if they run out of it, they're going to run out of it. Uh, next up, we have Careless Whisper. This is probably the one that I'm the least in love with. If I had to drop a Discipline, if I was playing Fae or something, this would be the one I drop. The reason why uh, Careless Whisper isn't as powerful on this build is because I'm doing a lot of non-left button attacks. I'm not doing that many LMBs with this build. I'm doing a lot of diffusions and backstabs and you're using all of your actual abilities much more than lmb so you're not stacking up that careless whisper as much you do still stack it up you do still get the uh empowered whispers every now and then but it's nowhere near the uptime that it you know was in the past or it is on other builds so if you're playing fey or nathari and you only have two miners to choose from i would definitely drop the careless whisper that'd be the first one i'd drop but it's still not bad it's still not bad, but it's just not great either. And we saved the best for last, and that is Sturdy. Plague is going to give you access to Sturdy, and this thing is incredible. Uh, <laughs> I can't say enough about how good Sturdy is for the Blackguard. You can stay above 85% health with incredible ease if you are using your barriers properly, your self-healing properly, and Venom, Blur, all that stuff. If, you're, if you have Blur and Sturdy up, you're looking at 48% damage mitigation and then when blur goes down you can pop in venom and get an 80 percent mitigation after that if you're playing right and you're you know properly mitigating the damage before it even comes in you can really milk the crap out of sturdy and uh if you're a black guard not taking this you are insane it is the this is the most insane discipline the like sturdy i can't think of a better class for sturdy or a better promotion class for sturdy than black guard this it's just the shit like you can't get around it it's badass so you gotta get that one all right now let's get on to the talents so i'm not going to talk about everything here just the high points first of all you're going to notice i have all the mobility i have blur disengage and blink step i know some assassin builds right now do not have blink step or disengage i love i love those two abilities I, I yeah i love them i can't give them up now, Blur is something I could go without if I wasn't a Blackguard, but for the Blackguard, Blur is just way too good. It's just incredibly good for Blackguard. If I was Vandal or Cutthroat, I could see myself potentially not taking it, but not on Blackguard. Um, next up, we have Yaga's Gift. This is significant now. They changed this ability from last patch, and it's going to heal you for 250 health every time you apply or refresh a poison buff. So that means every time you... Uh, do a shiv, you heal. Every time you do a groat, you heal. Every time you do blank step, you heal. Every time you do Envenom, you get a significant heal. And Venom's going to heal you for 750 health. Um, and it's actually going to be 1,000 health next patch because it'll apply four toxins. So this adds up to be a lot of healing. A lot more than you'd think if you're playing your class well. If you're playing the Black Guard well, it's going to add up to be pretty significant healing. So, uh, yeah. Pretty solid talent choice. And uh, last thing is probably Dagger Storm. So they did change Dagger Storm up a little bit. Uh, it is now a spender, but honestly, um, even though it scales with pips and it does more damage to bleeding targets, I still effectively use it the same way I did last patch. If if I don't have a barrier, Dagger Storm, whatever I'm at. If I'm at one pip, 
and the target's not bleeding, or if I'm at five pips and the target is bleeding, great. I don't I don't care. I just use this bad boy, winning the barrier, and that's that's how I utilize it in reality. But it is cool that it's got uh that it, you know, scales and does more damage and if this was your only spender, you actually could do pretty significant damage with Dagger Storm, which is pretty cool. I like that. Um, and we are the Plague Domain. But besides that, that's really all the high points for the talents. All right, now let's get on to the abilities. First up, we have Kidney Shot. I really don't think about this one too much. If the target can be stunned, I just throw it out there. Uh, I don't care if it's one pip or five pips. It doesn't really matter that much in reality. I mean, I guess if someone is Stam Drain, you hit that five-point Kidney Shot, it's going to be big. But for the most part, it really doesn't matter if you're at one point or five points. Um, and with the way that the Shadden, Shaddenfrode, however you say this that word, with the way this talent is, and you get a 10% damage buff whenever you stun or knock down somebody, you're kind of incentivized just to throw it out there. Like, you really can't go wrong. Um, that's the way I use it. Uh, I could probably utilize it a little bit more intelligently than that, but I don't know, it works pretty well for me. Uh, next up, we have Backstab. Now, my thought process behind Backstab has definitely changed this patch. Uh, last patch, I only used Backstab if I didn't have the Backstab barrier up. That's not the case anymore. Uh, I'm running a much more aggressive build, and Backstab does pretty good damage now with the exposed change. If your target is exposed, Backstab will always do from behind damage, and it hits pretty hard. And now that I have lifesteal, and now that my build is much more aggressive with me stacking uh, dexterity and, in, in, in general, more offensive stats, um, backstab hits pretty hard. And if you're, if you're overlapping backstab barriers and wasting backstab barriers, you're probably winning the fight anyway, so you might as well put the pedal down. That's kind of my thought process behind it. So I've just been throwing out backstab on cooldown. It does such good damage now that I, I feel like it's a waste to sit on it. Now on to Blur. This ability is nuts. You can do so many things with this and chain this ability with your other abilities to just complete ridiculousness. It's a lot of fun. It's going to grant you 40% movement speed and 30% personal damage modifier. With sturdiness, Blur is going to get you up to 48% personal damage modifier with this build. Um, it's it's incredible. I, I, really, <laughs> I really can't say enough with how good this is. Uh, what you can do with this is you can use it to chain large amounts of CC immunity. Uh, with Retaliates and Invenom, you can look, you can get nearly 30 seconds of CC immunity if you wanted to. Because you open up, you Invenom, then you Blur, then you Invenom again, and then you can almost Invenom again. And if you do that in combination with your Retaliates, you essentially cannot be CC'd for almost 30 seconds. It is wild. Um... This is a great ability to pop at the start of a fight uh, because you have 10 seconds of CC immunity. You can get all your debuffs up. You can get all your stuff rolling without disruption. Uh, this is particularly good against things like champions where when you open up on a champion, the first thing you're going to do, they're going to do to you is like neck breaker and hit you with every CC in the game and completely disrupt you. Not with blur. <laughs> Not with blur. Uh, Templars. Blur is amazing against Templars because the first thing they want to do is parry and knock you down. And they can't. It's hilarious. It's so much fun. Blur is incredible. I uh, can't say enough about that. Uh, Dagger Storm, this effectively functions the same way as did last patch for me. I just use it when I need a barrier. I don't care about the conditions. I don't care if it's one pip and the target isn't bleeding. If it's five pips and they are, I just use it when I need a barrier. That's simple enough. Uh, now we have Shiv. This ability is of the utmost, important, the utmost importance this patch. With the way Shiv refreshes your toxins... You need to use this as soon as it comes up. The second it comes up, drop everything you're doing and shiv. I don't care. I don't care what you're doing. Drop everything you're doing and shiv. Um, you, you can't you can't go wrong using this first. You need to absolutely be prioritizing this as the very first thing you do. It's gonna heal you. It's gonna refresh your instant and deadly toxins. It's gonna put up uh, your slow and your black mantle. Um, yeah, dude, you, you gotta use this one on cooldown. It, it does pretty good damage as well, builds pips, can't go wrong with it. You need to absolutely use this the second it's up. Next up, we have Garot. Uh, Garot got a massive buff for Black Guards. It is now, uh, it hits seven targets. Seven targets in a 360 degree area around your character and applies a bleed. 
And it also applies deadly toxin, which is the toxin that applies the damage over time. So not only is it applying a bleed, it's applying a damage over time toxin in a 360 degree, 8 meter radius around your character. That is fucking huge, by the way. Massive. Like, massive radius. It's a big-ass circle. Um, so, again, this is another ability. I just kind of YOLO it out there. Uh, something to consider with Garot is that uh, Garot does scale with pips, but the only the initial damage the attack does scales with pips, not the actual bleed. The bleed itself will hit for the same amount, whether it's one pip or five pips. Um, but the first initial hit does do more damage with, with, it, with five. However... I don't think it's really worth it to worry about it. I uh, I just throw Garot out there the second I get, you know, the second I see it's up, honestly. Whether it's one pip or five pips or three pips, whatever, I throw it out there. I want to get that bleed up as soon as possible. I want to get that deadly poison up as soon as possible. That's the way I view it. I uh, don't think about it too much. Just throw that bad boy out there whenever you get the chance. Uh, disengage. Um, I've always called this the best ability in the game. Because it's sick. Uh, the, the amount of movement options you have with this ability is incredible. Uh, you can move in ways that other classes can't replicate. You can use this to get away from people, jump to people. Uh, you can flex on people with your movement. It is, uh, I don't know. I really can't say enough about how useful this ability is. I very rarely actually use it for its intended purpose of disengaging and then re-engaging back on the same target. The only time I can think of that I do that frequently is when I'm fighting like a Stormcaller Druid and the ultimate, then I'll disengage back and then I'll re-engage after their ultimate's over. But other than that, <laughs> to be honest, I really just use this for mobility and parkouring and uh, and just doing movement that other people can't keep up with. Uh, blink Step. Now, this, is, uh, this got a little bit of a change. This patch is going to apply your instant toxin and it teleports you to your target. Now, there's two lines of thinking here with Blink Step. Some people do use this as their opener because it does apply instant toxin, and instant toxin is free damage. However, the way I view it is I'd rather have that Blink Step for my first mobility option if the target does decide to run or if they are, you know, a ranged class that wants to kite me. Um, so a lot of the times, I will still creep up to my target and hit them with the exposed backstab rather than just exposed blink stepping to them. Now, sometimes your target's running around and you're just realistically not going to be able to creep up to them without getting removed out of stealth. Um, if if you think you're not going to get the exposed, then definitely just expose blink step and, and definitely get the exposed, right? But, uh, yeah, it does apply instant toxin. So if you're fighting something like a Templar, it may be better to just expose Blink Step in and immediately get the instant toxin up for more damage. That is the higher DPS route is to Blink Step rather than Backstab as your opener. But, um, I don't know. I think if you're fighting something like, like a Confessor that's going to want to, you know, run away and try and hide, you want that Blink Step up. Next up, we have Barb Steak. Uh, Barb Steak is... Again, it's another one of those abilities. Don't think about it too much. Just throw that bad boy down wherever you're fighting. If they bother to get out of it, great. If they don't, even better. Uh, yeah, don't think about it too much. And we saved the best for last, and that is Diffusion. This is going to change the way you play entirely. This is a spender on a two-second cooldown. It's pretty incredible. It can hit for crazy damage if you have three toxins up. Uh, personally... I would only use this if you have one or two toxins up. Obviously, three is optimal, but in a realistic fight, you're going to be getting disrupted and CC'd, and you know things are not going to always go your way. So I think you're okay to use it at one or two toxins. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't just never use it if you only have if you don't have three. I know that's like kind of a lot of people think. Well, if I don't have three, I might as well not use it. I think it's actually worth using it one or two toxins still. And in a realistic fight, you're going to be getting disrupted. And, you know, maybe your uh, Garot gets interrupted by a pull or whatever. You know, things happen, right? You're not, it's not always going to go your way. But uh, Diffusion is going to make your DPS rotation very active. It's going to be a lot of, you know, one, two, Diffusion, one, two, Diffusion, one, two, Diffusion, one, Diffusion. Um, you, you, it's it's going to break your, your normal rhythm up quite a bit. And I think that's fun. I think it's really fun to have this super active DPS rotation. And uh, if your target is exposed and you hit them with the diffusion, it will knock them down. That's uh, not on the tooltip, but it's always been like that. 
So if your target is exposed and you hit them with a uh, diffusion at the exact same time they do an ability, it will knock them down. It's not super reliable. I would not r rely on that knockdown as like a consistent form of CC. Uh, it effectively functions like the old Duelist flint shot, uh, Flintlock shot back in the day. Um, but man, I can't say enough about this skill. I really think it's fun that we have a, uh, a setup skill where you have to, you know, preemptively get up these toxins and then you can finally hit that big attack. And, uh, I like it. I really do. I really do. It makes the D the assassin DPS rotation a lot more active. It's, uh, quite a bit of fun. All right, now let's get on to the ultimate and that is in Venom. This is going to replace your shadow step. So you're not going to be able to just immediately go into stealth. So you're much more committed to your fights now. So if you're using the Assassin to just run away, um, yeah, you probably won't like this build. This is a build made for actually fighting people. So Invenom is an ability that I use uh, not even for its intended function most of the time. Uh, it puts all your toxins up. Well, it will next patch. It doesn't put Deadly Poison up right now because it's bugged, but it effectively puts up all of your toxins. That is the, you know, that's the sexy part of the skill, right? But to be honest, I don't even use it for that. Most of the time I'm using it, I'm using it as a CC break, a CC immunity, or a heal. And I just view the toxins all coming up at the same time as a bonus. I'll use it to extend my CC immunity of blur. I'll use it to break a CC if I can't retaliate it. I'll use it to get a 750 heal if my sturdiness is getting ready to fall off. That's the way I use Invenom. And the extra toxins are great, but that's not why I use it. So um, I think that's kind of a, a fun way to use that skill because I think if you're trying to use it for all the toxin stuff, you're really you're really gonna miss out on the other the other aspects of the ult being badass. Oh yeah, it also gives you 80% damage reduction because it is an ultimate. So um, yeah, there's so many other ways to use this power that don't even involve the toxins at all. And I think using it for those reasons is going to net you more value than using it for the toxins. Because the toxins are good no matter what, but the CC break and the damage immunity and the heal, that stuff is much more situational. So that's a different way of viewing that power. Um, that's the way I'm currently using it. I don't know if that's the best way, but that's the way I like to think about it. Anyway, that's my Blackguard build. This patch hasn't been live that long, so this build may very well change some. Or there may be a better build out there. Don't take any of this as gospel. Um, I've had success with this build so far, but that does not mean there are not other good builds out there. Uh, a lot of people come up with a lot of really cool stuff, so definitely don't, you know, just only think that this is the way you can do it. Uh, some notes about this build is that you're going to have a very active DPS rotation. With all the skills I have uh, combined with Diffusion, you are going to be incredibly active in all of the abilities you're having to hit, you're going to be utilizing all 10 of your powers a lot. Uh, most classes in this game do not have this active of a DPS rotation, so um, that is something to consider. If you're a newer player, it's going to be a lot to take in, especially with you know having to learn all the other stuff going on around you. So uh, keep that in mind, but I will say it's very satisfying to play. Um, when things go well, it feels just oppressive to your enemies. It's just awesome the way it feels. But when, again, when things go poorly, <laughs> it feels terrible. So that's how Blackguard's kind of always been. When you're executing the skills properly and when you're able to mitigate the damage before it even happens, it feels amazing. But when you're playing like shit, you just fall right over. So uh, that's just how it's always been. Now let's get on to the gameplay segment. So you know I was going to start with the Hype 1v3 for this. Uh, this first clip is against a Frostweaver, an Assassin, and a Templar. I'm going to end up going on the Frostweaver first because that's the target I can most quickly kill that doesn't have any uh, vanishes or spam parry. And I actually make a mistake here. I should have popped my blur much sooner than I did. My thinking was to uh, only pop blur when I can't retaliate, but I should have popped it for the damage reduction. I'm going to put down my barbed stake. We're going to get some pretty good AoE damage going here. Should have blurred. I should have blurred right there, but I didn't. Uh, now I'm going to blur, uh, I pop my Invenom there for the heal, and then I blur, that's, that's, that was bad, I should have blurred way, way before then, I should have blurred almost immediately, especially in a 1v3 like this, but we've got pretty good damage going out, Frostweaver's going to go down, then I'm going to switch to the Assassin, uh, and we've got pretty, a pretty decent little amount, a little bit of lifesteal going, pop another Invenom for the heal, get the Garrote going, this Assassin's getting wrecked, now that it's a 1v1, I'm actually going to disengage out of that Divine Light, and notice how I get right around this corner right there. That's going to cause the Templar to miss his congregation. He actually misses his pull on me. So he's got to leap up to me and waddle to me rather than pulling him. Rather than him pulling him to me. And I get a nice 
Nice bandage channel off there into a Kenny shot on the uh, assassin into a Envenom heal. And now I've got some more life steal going, and we're actually gaining health. You know, we're actually going up in health now. And kill the assassin now to 1v1. This Templar knows what's going on. He's running for his life. It ain't happening. And he's going to go down, and that's the 1v3. Definitely made some mistakes. Um, my most obvious one being I should have blurred way sooner. Uh, in a 1v1, you probably do want to blur a little later, but in, in that kind of situation, you really want to take advantage of that damn introduction and milk that steady, uh, that steadiness from sturdy, or sturdiness from steady, I should say. Now on to another 1v2, 1v3 clip, and I'm going to hit this guy with the exposed blink step. That's going to dismount him. Then I'm going to hit him with the shiv into a kidney shot, into a garrote, and this man is in trouble. I have all my debuffs up, and this is going to show you the power of diffusion. He has exposed on him. And he's going to get hit with a bunch of Diffusion Knockdown. So watch this. Diffusion Knockdown 1. Uh, clerics really get owned by this because they have very long animation times. And I hit him with 3 Diffusion Knockdowns. Pretty brutal. He's going to start running away. So I'm going to pop my Blur. Gives me 30% movement speed. Unable to be CC'd. And there is no way he's getting away from me. There's another, uh, <laughs> there's another Garrote. And he is screwed. Now on to the Frostweaver. Frostweaver didn't do much damage to me. I've got tons of damage going for the lifesteal. Pretty good uptime, so my barriers are hitting. Uh, if a Blackguard has pretty good uptime, that's when they're the most tanky. So uh, I'm actually saving my Blink Step here. I know there are situations where I should Blink Step to him uh, for that instant toxin, but I'm of the belief that downtime... So there's where I use the Blink Step. I use the Blink Step because I, have no, I had no dodge rolls right there. I'm a believer that... The, the downtime is more of a DPS loss than the instant toxin. Might be wrong on that, but I generally hang on to blink, blink step until I need it for the mobility aspect of the skill. And here comes the next guy. This is a, uh, this guy's popping anti-stealth, so I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to hit this dude with the, hit this dude with the blink step. Not going to bother trying to creep up to that guy. He would have seen me. And I've got this dude's number. Um, now here's a situation where I could have probably envenomed for more damage, but again, I'm not a, I, I don't really use Envenom for the damage. I'm kind of just hanging on to it. I know I'm doing these little dinky diffusions that aren't doing much damage, but there's really not a lot of... Uh, there's not a lot of pressure for me to, to kill this guy quickly. You know, I'm in their keep, so they could come at any time, and I'd like to save my ultimates for getting away if I need to. But anyway, killing them in their keep, man. What's more fun than that? And for the final clip, we're going to show a fight against a Vindicator, which is something I have traditionally struggled with in the past because they just are super anti-melee. But right now, with the Blackguard and the CC immunity, you can just laugh at their parries. So watch this. Going to open up with Exposed Backstab, and then I'm going to get all my toxins up. Then I'm going to pop Blur. So there's the Blur. He cannot knock me down with parry. Look at this man. He is trying to parry his ass off, and it's not working because I'm CC immune. The second I get hit... With the first parry, I'm going to retaliate it, and then I'm going to immediately pop in Venom. That's going to heal me, put me back up into sturdy range, and make me CC immune again. And he's going to die. So we just ate all of that Vindicator's damage and pooped on him. So yeah, dude, Blackguard Assassin is pretty legit. Hope you guys found this video enjoyable. Uh, definitely going to be playing a lot of this on stream, so if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like. Be sure to check out my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Uh, and if you haven't checked out Crowfall, if you sign up with my referral link, you actually get a 10-day free trial and 25% off. Uh, I don't know how long that's running for, but they do have a special deal going on right now, so, uh, if you haven't, if you don't have Crowfall yet, sign up through my link, get your 10-day trial and your discount. Get in there, baby. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of the Black Art Assassin, if you're doing anything differently, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.